So here uh, you see an application called patient records. And we're looking for what happened within that application today. Okay. So you could go in and zoom back last 72 hours, last week, last month, or even last year if you wanted. And our system guarantees that you will be able to actually retrieve and display this information and perform your analysis. So here, there are 29 events that have occurred. We know exactly what time they have occurred. And I can specifically start zooming in into the specific time period. So if, let's say if you're talking about you know, a month's worth of data or investigating what a certain person did uh, you know, over a certain period of time, you can zoom in uh, into those uh, specific uh, time, time, uh, time frames. Now here you can see that three users have actually performed uh, those 29 uh, events that have got logged by our system. And one of them was the EMR application itself. So most of the events actually occurred from the EMR system itself. Then there was one administrator called Jay Harvey who performed some other events on the system. We'll try to zoom in and see exactly what he did. Uh, let us assume that he is uh, you know, uh, a user of the system, but he's not an administrator of the system. And then there's a third user who falls into the administrative role. Let's say he's the SA or the database administrator in this case. So this particular view of the application allows you to quickly zoom in from that application to you know, what events are occurring in time, to who the users were, and then what events they actually executed. So you will notice from, from, uh, uh, from each element of the console that they are tied back to the other areas of the console. That if I were to click on a user called Jay Harvey, some other areas of the console will automatically get updated. So now I know by clicking on Jay Harvey, you know, what did Jay Harvey do as opposed to, you know, what did the EMR application do, which is probably less interesting for me. And as I look through his events, I'm seeing one which has access denied, and then one which has failed transactions in it. So by just clicking on it, I can zoom in very quickly exactly what he did. So now I've zoomed in uh, onto those two access denied attempts. So he was actually accessing the patient records. And obviously he didn't have access, so he got an access denied error. Uh, that got picked up by our system and let us find out exactly what operation he was trying to perform against the database. And here you can see that he was trying to delete from the patient record where the patient ID was 1000. So the exact query that was issued by the application on behalf of user J. Harvey or the J. Harvey user you know, coming through a back door to that application uh, and trying to delete some patient data uh, was highlighted by our system. Now when such an event occurs, it becomes really interesting to find out you know, what the audit trail is and, and you know, what other things this person may have done on that session or other sessions. And our system allows you to drill down to an excruciating level of detail. So not only do you know what transactions he executed, but everything else that he did, simply by drilling down from the event and ask and requesting the session details, show me the entire session of what this person did. By clicking yes, I can download this file of everything that he did, and let's see what actually happened. Now here's, here you can see that the user, Jay Harvey, logged into the system. He selected all the records from patient data, and he got 22 rows that were returned back. So in this particular system, we only had 22 records of 22 patients. But uh, this is immediately something that would have logged you know, every security and auditor's uh, uh, interest, that why would anybody record, you know, want to select all the patient data? And then everything that else that he did, here you can see that you know, he, had, uh, he tried to update the patient data, uh, the birth date, and he got an error message saying invalid column name. And then when he actually tried to delete the patient data, he tried it twice with uh, patient ID 1000, and then he tried to delete everything from patient data, and both the times he got an error message saying that delete permission denied. And then uh, he did some select statements, uh, and then he logged out of the system. So his entire audit trail, including you know which rows were touched, who the person was, in which sequence he did it, at what times he did it, every single thing is blocked. You, sh you will also notice from here that some of the important information was blocked from that particular log that we produced. That if you look over here, it says patient's social, social security number. 
it shows up as you know five pounds and then zero six six four. And the reason is our system is actually while it's capturing the audit trail, when it finds sensitive data, it even masks that sensitive data. 